I wanted to um, look at just this is just to pass the time. <laughs> I want to go on, on to um, barriers. Uh, I have to say um, this is also another issue. I know it's a joke, obviously, but it, it is an issue in terms of lots of things that are going on in the UK. And I don't know if any of you, if you ever try to ring um, call centres and you talk to someone in India and um, it's very, very difficult, especially around your mobile phone, trying to shift it to New Zealand. Any of my troubles. So I want to ask you, is how many of you have made it an ACP? One? So, whoa! <laughs> and I just want to say, this is us. Well, not everyone, I'm sorry. Anyone who's in their 50s. <laughs> So we are the group, we are the group that everyone's been talking about. Well, we will be soon, quite fast for some, me and some of you, maybe others. So I think you should be thinking about your own ACP. I mean, why are we going around telling other people to do them? We haven't even done, done one ourselves. I haven't actually, I have to say. But my husband knows exactly what I want him to do. <laughs> but so, so if, how many of you have had the conversations then? Ah, right. Carefully chosen your surrogate. Hope that they'll outlive you. <laughs> it's, and I think, you know, if you have done that and, and you've got a system that actually will act on, on these, these instructions, then you're on your way, really. So quickly, um, just on barriers, and I'm sure you, you, you know all of these, but these, these return again and again in the literature. Um, people are just not interested. Just don't do it or don't get round to it always putting it off and it's a difficult subject so they avoid it so this is avoidance they need help um, and changing minds I've got a slide later just about changing minds because that's actually quite important um, dependence on the families vague don't the documents and there's a different document and Simon talked about a really nice simple one that's in the UK and if you look on the, um, the preferred priorities of care has got a lovely little one actually just perfect, really. And there's one on the gold standard framework, which is quite good as well. So I mean, they'll say more or less the same thing. So um, I don't know why they're so complicated, but in the US they apparently are very complicated because they, they like to tick all the boxes and, you know, to cross and dot the I's and so on. But procrastination is, is obviously an, is, is quite a, a serious one and is probably maybe reason why some of you haven't done them and our person personal beliefs and values, our cultural and ethnic differences actually influence whether we want to talk about our end of life, whether we um, want to think about that it's even going to happen and so on. So we have, we have a death-denying society um, and a lot of people just put it off because they're waiting to, to do it later or they're frightened about what it might mean and what they might decide to do that they might change their mind about later. And the professional avoidance, is, this is not an exhaustive list, it's actually quite, quite long, but I've just put a few here. And, that's, and, and, and there's things like judging the right time to actually initiate the discussion. And at lunchtime I was talking to someone about have, having to make a relationship, you have, someone has to trust you to even have that conversation. Or if you're a good uh, communicator, then you might get that trust quite quickly. You just don't knock on the door and say, okay, here's your form, you've got to sign it. But the US does that. People will walk into the care facility, that's one of the documents they have to fill out. So they have to have it in their head. So, I mean, maybe we could be a bit more forceful and not so gently, gently. I don't know, it's something maybe to think about whether, whether we should. But people do worry about robbing patients of hope um, and they don't feel skilled. And there's also a lot of organisational confusion around the process. And I think that's, that's been demonstrated today. Um, and it's, it's actually really, really complicated anyway. And also time. People don't want to um, just add this other job to their normal clinical routine and practice of care. It's just another piece of paper, another job they have to do. Again, just lack of knowledge um, that for people filling them out. But I think the, this is very US because I think we're going down a much more, the UK has gone down a much more simpler sort of form. But the complexity of healthcare and not actually making unreasonable choices, like demanding particular things that they might want. And then again, people who do want physician assisted suicide, you know, I, I assume there are people in this country who do 
do that. Well, yes, there's been a very uh, high-profile uh, case in, in, in NZ, and there are always high-profile cases coming up in the UK. So those would be classed as unreasonable choices that you put on your care plan that you expect your family to actually sort of undertake and carry out for you. Changing minds is actually quite an interesting one. Um, and it's this idea that the desire for a good death is, is actually coexists with this very powerful desire to stay alive. So, and there's, there's quite a few situations, and I, I just quickly one stroke case of a woman who came into A&E. Um, um, she had an advanced directive. She didn't want any treatment. She wanted to just be, uh, you know, managed conservatively. But the neurologist who saw her didn't know that, managed her aggressively, and she sort of came round and was talking and um, still had a massive stroke. So she rewrote a will and she changed her advance directive and she wanted to live. She wanted everything that they were going to throw at her because she suddenly realised it actually wasn't such a bad idea. It wasn't such a good idea to actually go out not kicking and screaming. So, so the thing was that um, she, this, this happens and this, this can happen quite, quite regularly with people. And, and the saying is you should write your advance directive every day because you might change your mind. Um, and we do change our minds about those sort of things. The other one that I think is really significant, and I think New Zealand should be addressing it, and, and our fastest growing population is Asian, I believe. Um, so I think there's, there's you know, quite a lot of um, things that need to be considered in relation to, to, um, to the different needs of people. And um, the research of which there, I don't know, I couldn't find any New Zealand studies about ACP and uh, decision making in Maori or Pacific or even Asian. There are a few uh, North American ones and there's one I found in Australia for indigenous people, but essentially it's actually much more complex. They don't trust the system. In the US, they're actually the group that uh, get the poorest treatment, the poorest care. So they don't believe that they'll be looked after in the way that they've actually described. And really lovely, lovely pieces of work that say things like, I just want to meet my maker. I just, you know, I'm not, I just want to go out, go out. You know, so, so this is kind of a whole way of looking at the world and, and behaving in the world. And we kind of get hung up on this idea that you've got to have all these plans made. But really, they're actually more interested in their spiritual, th th what's happening to them spiritually, what's happening uh, in the afterlife often than actually what's going to go on um, in this, this last sort of few days of their life or last short time of their life. So I'm just skip over that one. <laughs> I'm always going over time, sorry. Just I wanted to quickly um, put up this because I think that it's really important that you think about your unit and where you're doing this and who, who, who the group are that you've got a, a care plan with and who is part of the team. I mean, for example, in the UK, paramedics are now having palliative care training and that's so that they know about things like preferred priority of care documents in the house and so they can act on them so they don't blue light someone to hospital because when they're called, they are obliged to, to take them. And if family members say, I don't want to go, or they said, and they make their own judgment, the, the, the paramedics, as to whether they go or not. Um, and so there's a lot, lot of training gone into that, particularly around London. And psychiatric hospitals, there's a few studies on looking at people with severe psychiatric illnesses and what sort of advanced care plans they make and what, what their concerns are. And interestingly, there were some care plans on how, which hospitals they don't want to go to and which drugs they don't want to have and, you know, written and signed and, and, and quite clearly their wishes. So I thought that was a really interesting angle for using advanced care plans because they don't necessarily have to be about dying, as was mentioned earlier. So no one formula for all. And there's a lot of... I, I, no, I haven't got time, but there's a, there's a... I want to just address a couple of those, and I've addressed some of them. And dying people with dependent children are a particularly... Um, important group and that's also a group that are more likely to be you know having the last requests as they're dying um, it's very applicable to, to advanced care planning but it's actually an incredibly sensitive area and preparing for the children who'll be left behind and leaving memories and so on so it does require quite highly skilled people to have those conversations but you do need to be aware that they they are conversations that need to take place um, I've said Frail elder people, frail elderly people, um, learning disabilities, I've mentioned there's not much. And then, of course, the specific diseases, which Kerry mentioned, are actually quite easy to map. 
um, but not COPD. And there's a few new papers out. Um, Merrin got has she's the new professor at Auckland. Um, some quite interesting things to say about COPD and advanced care planning you might want to read. And some concluding thoughts, basically on here. <laughs> um, it's it, what what the work from the preferred priorities of care um, sort of follow up and evaluation showed was it actually opened up communication. So at least it's a way of starting the conversation, starting to ask people what it is they want, and and um, so someone is going a surrogate possibly can actually speak for them with with good authority. Um, they involve distinct steps, and it's really important that actually there is a reflection and discussion, and it's not just to kind of write it down and, you know, very quickly. It's, it's, it's much more complex than that. And that you should be doing it now. You should be doing it as soon as you can. You should be doing it amongst yourselves. Um, I think that's probably all I'd like to say. I, I suppose there's one about literacy and language is, is something that needs to be considered when you are doing your workshops <laughs> and setting up an advanced care plan. And key elements, I won't go over those because they're all in the documents. And just um, things that you need to know for professionals. You need to understand the legal frameworks of the documents you're working with. You need to be skilled and um, it's a potentially emotionally and taxing work. It isn't, it isn't easy, so no one pretends that it is. You need protected time to do it. So if you're bosses and managers and whatever, you need to, if you're going to expect your teams to do that, you need to actually make sure they've got time to do it. And good, um, good um, what do you call it, free time, you know, quality time. So, so it's not just something they have to do in a hurry. Um, and you need to be comfortable about your own death. So really, I would say the starting point is think about your own death. Think about what you want and how you want to, uh, how you want this managed as you as you come into old age. <laughs> and I just wanted to put the last slide up because it was sort of on a on a lighter side, but actually, um, kind of or not, you know, it's um, there are you can make a joke of it, but at the same time. Uh, you know, there's, there, there are things to be thought about. And I think in humour, there's always really important uh, little gems. <laughs> and thank you. Sorry, I went over time. <laughs> it's no time.